Hello everybody and welcome to a long-awaited video of another sketchbook tour. My name is Jessica and today I'm going to show you an inside look in my sketchbook. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for tuning back in. I'm super excited to share this sketchbook with you guys that I recently finished. It's a 9x12 hardcover mixed media sketchbook and I actually painted this cover myself to set a tone for the sketchbook. In my previous video, I show you guys how I actually painted this, so be sure to check it out. Since it's a mixed media sketchbook, I decided to do an octopus holding all these different art supplies. This sketchbook is my most favorite yet, so let's get started. So when you open up the front cover, I always like to write my name at the top and a welcome message to show some warm feelings as you open the sketchbook. I like to put some contact information at the top just in case it gets lost, and I completed the sketchbook from May to August 2020. I also collaged the sticker I made, and I made a nice little illustration with me and my cat sitting in this magical home with some positive words like keep going and don't stop to set the mood for the sketchbook. I always like to make something fun on the inside cover because it's just a way for me to stay motivated and set some positive goals. Okay, so for the first few pages, I actually started last year and then didn't pick up the sketchbook, but all of the others I did in 2020. But this was a series I started called 500 Prompts, and it was a book that gives you a prompt and you have to create an artwork for it. So this one was Wizard Staff and Waterfall, and this is what I created. I also made videos on these, so you guys can check those out. The next prompt was zombies, and I decided to create these zombie cat sitting on a trash can with the guts kind of spilling out. I don't know, this was totally experimental, but I actually really like how the colors came out. I originally designated the sketchbook just for these prompts and ended up actually streaming away from it, but it's okay, I know you guys are waiting for the videos and I promise I'll try to get them back. So for the third prompt, I did a sandcastle scene with these fun seagulls, and I know you guys know I love seagulls, <laughs> they're all over the cover as well, and I did this cute little turtle hiding inside the sandcastle. I actually started off YouTube with some of these prompts, so it's a good little memory and I really hope to get back to them. For the next spread, I painted a bunch of people that I saw on the beach. I'm a big believer on painting and drawing from life, so there's never a bad time to take your paints and your sketchbook and capture what you see in front of you. So that's what I did here, and I really like how those top ones came out. And I really tried to capture everybody's expression and colors, and I just used some watercolor and ink over it. And here's this lady that was snoring next to me on the beach. It's always great to capture days and moments in your sketchbook, because as soon as you see it, it brings you back to that memory. Alright, so for the next spread, I did these floral pattern gouache paintings of the flowers that I saw in On Vacation, actually. And I ended up snapping some photos of them and creating these paintings where I focused on specific colors because they actually looked like that and I wanted to capture it. I was super inspired by the patterns and the shapes that I saw and they were great for a beautiful painting in my sketchbook. I was also testing out the paper and it ended up holding the gouache excellently. Alright, moving on, I did these random character sketches of these funny little monsters and as if they're experiencing and getting to know fruits for the first time. I had some of them hold pumpkins and this guy's eating cherries and this monster ended up finding an apple. But I really liked this guy talking on the phone to a banana. I thought it was pretty funny and I actually realized that she's looking over to the right to the next spread where I practiced some figure drawings because I haven't in a while and I wanted to do some lighting and graphite drawing to practice light and form. And that brings me to the next spread where I started the 100 heads challenge. I absolutely love drawing and painting portraits, so I felt that this was the perfect opportunity to practice them, and I used a bunch of mixed media to do so. I experimented with graphite, markers, paint, ink, and it was a really, really great challenge to tackle. I do have a video on how I drew each and every one of these heads, so be sure to check it out, and I'll have everything linked below in the description. So here I experimented with markers, and on this spread I did a painting of each of the sculptures that I saw in the reference pages posted by the artist that started this challenge. I wanted to create a really interesting composition, really focus on the lighting, and use different colors to create these portraits. And I'm really happy with the way they came out. I used watercolor and gouache for these, and the layout of the spread was inspired by one of the spreads that I did in my Italy travel sketchbook, since the sculptures reminded me of the ones that I painted there. For the next few, I decided to paint a full spread in just brush pen and ink. I wanted to practice cross-hatching with my fountain pen, 
and see how I can push my skill with ink. I also diluted some black watercolor and unified the spread how I did in the previous one. For the next few heads, I decided to combine all of the materials and I missed graphite so I did a few more up top. And after the 50 mark, I really felt like they were improving and I really liked my pencil mark making. I did some more paintings and some more ink work and overall saw an improvement. Personally for me, the more I try and experiment, the more I feel I improve. So for this spread, I decided to do a full ink drawing spread of using black ink, blue ink and brown ink and I connected them to make sure I have another unifying spread. I basically chose all the goblin dudes and put them all together in a group. Here I just used a colored pencil, the Prismacolor Colorace, to draw out these sculptures, focusing on cross-hatching and creating a limited color palette with just the Tuscan Red, which I think makes everyone's art look good, and a green color to use as complement. Moving on, I pushed myself to make these bordered paintings of the next heads, and usually you want to give up at this point, but I decided to keep going and make some paintings, which I felt were super strong. While doing any challenge, I really recommend pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and you'll surprise yourself with the improvement that you see. For the next spread, I decided to focus on the three tones of the primary colors. I used pinks, blues, and yellows to create these paintings and I bordered them off to create a nice composition in my sketchbook. And I find myself focusing on a composition the most because I feel like it's one of the most important elements that you should practice. Now for numbers 99 and 100, I laid out a limited color palette and I used some crappy craft paint actually for these because I wasn't home and I loved the way these portraits came out. I wanted to create two final big paintings to finish strong and actually celebrate finishing 100 heads. Finishing a new challenge is fantastic because it helps you stay motivated, you get to practice skills and you just generally feel awesome when you're done. And that was me completing the 100 heads challenge, so let's move on to the next spread. On the left, I painted a view that I saw on the balcony, and it was a calm before the storm. There was a big storm coming, so I decided to capture it and paint from life. And on the right is a demo that I did for the 5 ways to fill your sketchbook video, which is getting so much love, so thank you everybody for the positive feedback. I painted this cute little van in acrylic, in grayscale and in color, and it's one of my favorite ways to fill my sketchbook. Alright, on the next spread, I decided to paint from life once again in a limited color palette on the left. And to challenge myself, I randomly picked three different tubes of paint and then created the painting. I decided to capture this view by the poolside. And on the right, surprise, surprise, some more seagulls. I just think they're super expressive and funny, so that's what I decided to capture here. I used a ballpoint pen and created some sketches while trying to capture all their different poses. Now moving on to the next page, this is one of the spreads that I filled with my sketch with me video where I filled two spreads and I also talk about creativity and confidence. So if you haven't already done so, check it out. Here I wanted to do a bunch of action poses and I unified it once again with a watercolor wash across the whole spread. I realized that I really love doing that since I feel that everything should always be connected. Now this next spread is also part of that video, but I decided to do a bunch of ink practice using my brush pen and some fine liners. I wanted to create a dynamic composition of a profile view and include some intricate line work. I enjoy using brush pens because they give you a nice dry brush and they capture the texture of the paper really well. And in this spread, I did a drawing from life once more of an architectural building that I saw next to where I live. And it was great because I decided to practice some architectural perspective while incorporating some bright colors and some fun doodles that I love to do. I used gel pens to do the drawing and some Crayola markers to do the coloring. Now speaking of doodles, this is exactly what I decided to do here. I just grabbed a red ballpoint pen and sat on my balcony and doodled away. And I actually use this object in my surroundings. It's like this thing I got from Ikea. It's a hanger for the clothes to dry and that's where this character was inspired by. Inspiration is all around us, so anytime you're feeling stuck, just look around. All right, moving on to the next spread. I did some more painting and drawing from life. I drew some jet skis and I did them in all these random colors. And the panoramic view of actually where they were docked, I did in black and then added a pop of color. 
I realized it's really hot to draw on the beach, but nothing stops me. Wherever I go, I love to capture every moment. Now, here's an illustration that I did for the Paint With Me video. And at first, I wasn't sure on what to paint, but then I just used a limited color palette and it came to me, this random idea with a beautiful, soft, and warm color palette. I tried to create some concept to the piece, and I also attached the palette next to it for some memories. I feel like the artist's palette is a work of art of its own. Here are some more floral drawings that I did from life. I decided to do a realistic graphite drawing for these. And on the right, I decided to practice my polychromal pencils for the first time, inspired by my favorite plant that lives in my room, and I love him very much. Drawing what you love guarantees it to be that much better. Now for this next spread, I decided to practice some more portraits with graphite on the left, and again, color pencil on the right. I had recently just purchased the polychromal pencils and decided to try them out, and I absolutely fell in love. I drew these in my first ever Q&A, so be sure to check that video out as well. I did many of my recent videos in my sketchbook, so I'll have everything linked below. Now this next spread was inspired by my double colored heads from my other sketchbook tour, which you guys could recognize. And I had a lot of fun with this one because I included some mixed media where I used colored pencils, ink, markers, and acrylic. And I absolutely love the outcome after experimenting. And towards the end of my sketchbook, I decided to finish strong with the 100 hands challenge. Since I love doing the portraits, I decided to do the same with the hands. I chose to do 100 hands since I don't normally practice drawing hands and I felt a little bit rusty, so I used a bunch of mixed media and the same concept that I did with the heads with the hands. And I also did a video on this so you guys can check it out. So while completing this challenge, I decided to learn the sign language as well and practice hands at the same time. Why not, right? I did the full English alphabet and I also took my own references. That way, I'm really learning and practicing. I used a ballpoint pen for the alphabet and for the numbers, I used gel ink pens. I actually learned that when you sign the first five numbers, you sign them with the palm facing in. So that was awesome practice. And when you sign the other numbers, they're all signed palm facing out. I also did all the even numbers in black and all the odd numbers in navy. And many of you guys have loved these and have been asking for prints, so I will be having them out very, very soon. For the next few hands, I decided I was craving some color, so I did this colorful spread with all the hands interacting and then I unified it all together with some watercolor. I used a bunch of bright colorful markers and some watercolor paint, and that way I was able to create a flowy look for this spread. I kept experimenting with different compositions, different mediums, some of the hands were interacting, and an accidental spill of paint got me to create these flame hands, and they ended up being one of my favorites. Continuing on to the next few hands, I decided to do the mudras. I used the Prismacolor Colorase pencils for this and I also labeled all the gestures with their names. I found it super fun to get to know new skills and new information through drawing. I like to think of every subject as you getting to know it while you create and paint it. So I was really feeling ballpoint pens during this challenge and here I used three colors, purple, blue and red to create some more practice sketches. I was focusing more on big shapes and general geometric lines rather than a curvy structure for the hands and I realized that that was very helpful when I was drawing. I also practiced bright limited color schemes, ones that I don't usually normally go for and played around with different colors to see which ones looked better with the others. I was really feeling these pinks and blues and bright oranges, so that was what's happening here. And I realized that I feel like I love delicate colors and really, really bright colors, so it's usually hard to pick between the two. Having fun with these colors in your sketchbook is a great way to find out what you love best. For the next spread, I decided to do hands interacting. So I did two hands holding one another, one as like a pinky promise and the others as a handshake. And then I did some fountain pen ink drawings of hands that basically symbolize ideas or thoughts. And it's time to approach the final pages of my sketchbook where just like in the heads, I decided to do two paintings. For number 99 and 100, I did a limited color palette 
once again. I did a grayscale painting in acrylic of an older man's hand and one more painting of a blue color palette of my own hand holding a paintbrush since I want to show gratitude for what helps me create. At this moment, I felt super happy and excited to finish the sketchbook, but also nostalgic because I was coming to an end with it. But I was super happy to finish another 100 <laughs> challenge in the sketchbook. And for the last page in my sketchbook, I decided to add a bunch of quotes that I felt spoke to me from really famous and successful creatives. Quotes and famous sayings help me stay creative, so I wanted to leave this video with some of these that helped me and I hope will help you stay motivated as well. I am super happy to have shared this with you guys and I hope it inspired you to create some of your own masterpieces in your sketchbook. I can surely say that when you finish your sketchbook, you feel super accomplished, extremely happy and full of joy. Although I finished this one, it's an exciting time to start another. It's also going to be great to look back at this over time and see how I progressed and it's just always a good place to get to to have fun and create. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed a little something that I put my heart and soul into. I also hope that it inspires you to create your own masterpieces and stay in touch with your sketchbook and stay creative. Do what feels good, draw what you love and take time to experiment. Well, I'm really proud and happy to say that I have finished this large sketchbook. I definitely feel like I achieved all the goals that I set before starting. I created many illustrations, many drawings from life's and two big 100 challenges. I feel super great and excited to start the next. I'd like to say thank you so much for watching once again. I will have all the videos that I mentioned and links down below in the description. So feel free to check that out for any more information. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!